Hello everyone! Today we're going to tie a really, really, really basic and simple fly. This is intended to be one of those flies that are uh, one of the really, really best flies to start out uh, uh, in your fly tying. It's simple, it's fast, it's easy to, uh, to do in a lot of different variations and a lot of different colors, but it's also a fly that's highly efficient, that catches a lot of fish. Um, this is in particular designed for as a streamer fly for, for still water, for lakes and for, for reservoirs. So, so here goes, this is the Flash Woolly, simple, easy way to start your fly tying career with a fly that really works as well. So here goes the flesh woolly, a really simple and easy fly to get you started with fly tying. The first thing we need for this fly is of course a hook. Um, where did I put those? Those are right here. Um, for this fly I'm just going to use basically just a simple standard uh, wet fly hook. This is an Arex one. And, and we need, before we start tying the actual tying, we need to uh, add a small bead. Uh, this is a cyclop bead uh, made from brass. And this will give the fly a bit of bounce in the water and a bit of weight, so it will it will sink a bit faster. Um, there is two different sizes of holes in uh, in one of these brass beads, and uh, and basically you just mount it by adding you know the hook the hook point in the uh, in the smallest of these holes. Then it will be mounted correctly. Then we mount the fly back on the uh, on the vise here, and we're good to go. So. I'm gonna take my tying thread, and the way, way you, you actually get the tying thread on here is basically just hold it tight with one hand and then tie behind itself. Then it will, it will lock the thread in place. Then we move the tying thread all the way down to the, uh, to the start of the hook bend, to where the hook starts to bend, and that's basically our, our main point of, uh, of starting the fly. So, for this we need a tail made from a marabou feather, and uh, I just did this video in Danish. So, so what basically we need is is a point of a marabou is, is a part of a marabou feather to to compose the tail. Um, the way I do this is I, I use my uh, my fingers as kind of a, as kind of a, a set of pliers, and then I hold the marabou feather, and then I place my fingers around the feather, and then I cut really close to the hackle stem. To the center of the feather, and then I can easily remove all of this. I now have all my marabou feather fibers in between my two fingers, and now I can carefully and easily pick them up together. And now I have a bushy tail that has an enormous amount of life in the water. This actually is a bit too much, so. And that's, that's one of the crucial things here. You have to look out for not getting too much material on there because it will make your fly look too bulky and not, not be as interesting to the fish as if it has the, the right um, proportions. The way to measure out the, the length of the tail is, is roughly, for a fly like this, roughly the same length as the hook. So basically, I take my tail here and I place it on top of the hook to see how, uh, how long is there from the eye to the hook bend. And then about this size is the right for, for, for my tail. Then I swap my fingers, so I have it in my left hand instead. And then I make a few loose turns. And then I apply some pressure gradually to have a good firm place for this to be tied down. And now some of these fibers is a bit long and if you want to, to pull them a bit shorter uh, for a tail of marabou, it's crucial, crucial that you do not cut these but that you rip them with your fingers. Because if you cut them it will, it will look too straight and too, too uh, uniform and not, not like an actual thing that, that, that could be a live thing. So I'm gonna hold this marabou and then I'm gonna make some turns here with my left hand um, to about close to, pretty, fairly close to the beat. So when I cut this off, it's gonna go all the way up to the beat. And I do this 
in order to have a body here that is um, close to evenly thick all the way around and all the way up the uh, the actual hook shank as you can see it's it's fairly even in length because if i've cut the feathers up down here then the first two turns of my um, of my body material the cactus snail would have made the fly really bulky down here and then made it a lot thinner all the way up towards the uh, towards the bead which would not have looked as good as as it does now so um, the next thing is the body material, and this is cactus senile. Cactus senile is available in two different sizes, depending on your hook size. You can you can choose either the six millimeter version or the fifteen millimeter version. Version for these smaller flies, this is a size eight, I think. And um, the the six millimeter versions is nice because then you don't have to to taper it with your with your scissor as, afterwards. Um, cactus senile is basically some some flesh fibers. Um, woven in between some uh, some cotton and you can just pull out some of these fibers here to get just the cotton core there we go and this is uh, nice because again you can you can control exactly where to start but also you can you can make sure that you do not get a too bulky um, uh, base layer for the rest of the body here so there we go. Now I've tied this down, just removing the marabou. And as I said, this is just some flesh fibers woven in between some um, some cotton, uh, cotton string, I think. And then basically what we do now is just turn this. Turn it fairly evenly all the way up here. It does not have to be just right on top of one another. That will give a too bulky, too... Um, Maybe no, that's fine. A too bulky, too uh, too dense body, but gradually move the uh, the cactus needle all the way up towards the uh, the bead here. Make sure you 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 apply some pressure here. Then you hold the cactus needle out uh, in front of the hook, and then you use your left hand to secure the cactus needle. There we go. We're gonna cut away the uh, end of the cactus needle. And then we're going to make some finishing touch by making a, either a whip finish or a half, a half pipe knot, I think it's called, where you take the, uh, the thread, double it, and then pull it in the loop and pull the loop tight and you have a knot. If you do it like that, like this, you'll have to make five or six of these in order to uh, to get your fly to be as as sturdy and uh, and durable as possible well there goes the flesh woolly so here is the finished flesh woolly bucker the thing about this pattern is is an entry level um a fly tying pattern and you can of course change things up quite a lot by adding a lot of different colors of uh, of uh, crystal flesh and of marabou so it's it's easy to to get a lot of different patterns that are fairly simple to tie and if you're new to fly tying then on this youtube channel we have a lot of different uh, youtube tutorials uh, in particular two that 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 takes you by the hand and and will explain in depth exactly what all the different fly tying uh, tools are for and show you a lot about all the different techniques these are called uh, beginners fly tying part one and two uh, but also regarding this pattern in particular it's good to note that this fly works really well in a lot of different sizes so um so you can you can buy a different size of hook and you can basically tie a lot of these fast and simple uh, for a lot of different situations um, as always you can find the full and complete material kit to this fly and many others at nordic anglers um, i'm daniel hall and uh, i would like to thank you for watching and it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to the channel otherwise uh, the only thing left to say is i wish you all the best of luck out on the water